We come today to Psalm 21, and in the New International Version, the psalm reads like this. O Lord, the King rejoices in your strength. How great is his joy in the victories you give. You have granted him the desire of his heart and have not withheld the request of his lips. You welcomed him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him, length of days, forever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him eternal blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the King trusts in the Lord. Through the unfailing love of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. At the time of your appearing, you will make them like a fiery furnace. In his wrath, the Lord will swallow them up and his fire will consume them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. For you will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your might. The psalm opens with the declaration, O Lord, the King rejoices in your strength. And it is the victories you give, the desire you have granted, and the request you have not withheld, which the King cites as evidence of God's strength. The first half of the psalm demonstrates the strength of the Lord as he does what the king cannot. If the king is the commander in chief and if the resources of the nation are at his disposal, we tend to think of him as being powerful and privileged. And it's very easy to minimize the testimony of this psalm as a consequence. But the psalmist wants us to understand that God prevailed against armed opposition when the king was outmatched. And that when the desire of the king's heart and the request that was not withheld were out of the king's reach, um, not available to him through normal means, God answered his prayer. The second half of the psalm demonstrates God's strength in the way he overcomes his enemies. So verse 8 tells us that God's enemies do not escape. Verse 9 tells us that God's enemies are destroyed. Verse 10 tells us that all their influence is eliminated. Verse 11 tells us that every plan is foiled. And verse 12 describes their yielding to God and being entirely at his mercy. So the psalmist concludes, be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. Let us take a moment for prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you welcomed David as king. 
that he became the successor to Saul without recourse to military revolt or the power of men. You placed a crown of pure gold on his head. We thank you, Lord, that despite the hazards of his life, the many occasions on which his life was in jeopardy, you heard his prayer for life and granted it to him. We thank you for the enduring blessings that you gave to David. We think of him as the psalmist of Israel. We thank you for the revelation of yourself that you gave to him and that you have recorded for our benefit through the Psalms. We thank you that you helped him not only to repel the aggressor, but to subjugate him. And we think of the glory of the reign of David, who began as a shepherd boy, not from a royal family, and became Israel's greatest king. And we thank you that in this psalm, we see your power and your strength demonstrated. We see no enemy prevail against you. And we see no situation out of your reach or beyond your power. And we ask that you will help us as we pray to bring our troubles and our weaknesses and our powerlessness to you, to trust in your unfailing love and await your answer. Amen. <laughs>